In the 1940s, an Austrian immigrant to America and refugee from Nazi Germany, Dr. Wilhelm Reich, made the scientific discovery of a previously unknown energy existing in the atmosphere, in space, and within living organisms. Reich developed what he called a science of organomics based on the positing of a fundamental sexual life energy animating the whole universe, which he called orgone energy. We remember Reich's theory of orgone energy, if we do these days, mostly via his invention of the orgone energy accumulator, a large wooden box inside which the patient would sit to absorb the orgone energy, achieve orgiastic potency and cure all manner of mental and physical ills. This is completely nuts, right? In the universe, there is this matter which can be filled you with orgasmic power, which can cure your diseases by you jerking off. So all you know, Fab, no Fab. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I, I can't take this serious. This is honestly really retarded. So welcome to William Reich. Someone you should not take serious in any any reason whatsoever. The, 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 the only people who take this guy serious are like complete nut Catholic traditionalists or New Agers who thinks that sex magica works perfectly fine or in health. Ugh. Orgone energy, as Dr. Reich discovered, was synonymous with life energy long postulated by scientists and accepted as fact by ordinary people from around the world, orgone energy could be gathered in its free form directly from the atmosphere using a device he later called the orgone energy accumulator. A simple enclosure resembling a large hollow capacitor composed of alternating layers of special insulators and conductors the orgone accumulator allowed a high charge of the orgone to collect inside itself facilitating its direct study and revealing many of its properties. So if you take William Reich a little bit serious now, uh, personally I have encountered William Reich, I would say two years ago, usually through uh, Robert Anton Wilson, but regardless of that, he's always been fascinating. He has been a bit of an offshoot from Freud. Freud theories were based around that everything that humans do have the sexual idea behind it, for example. You want to do revolution, or you're an idealist, then it's revolution, you want, sorry, then it's sex. Do you want money? Well, then it's sex. And so on and so forth. So what William Reich did was kind of built up some sort of a claim, a more over humification, a sort of metaphysical claim on that it is not just within humans, it is within the universe. Sex transcends humanity. And this is his reason with the organ energy. And then he tries to prove this by, see, by seeing that sexual energy manifested itself in reality. Dr. Reich reasoned that both the hurricanes and galaxies were created and put into motion by superimposing streams of organ energy in a cosmic dance similar to the sexual attraction between male and female. To say one of the reasons why William Reich is popular today is mostly because of his... Well, the Nazis, for example, he burned his books. And when he came to America, well, everybody kind of threw him away, saying, you are completely nuts. People who like William Reich, they usually say that scientists have proved his theories, because, for example, dark matter is organ energy, which it ain't, obviously, and all of this negativity has brought some sort of a cult idea around William Reich. This is why he's popular. I mean, Robert Anton Wilson, the reason why he thinks it's interesting is because, oh, well, it was, uh, it was burned by the establishment, which means it must have some sort of legitimacy behind it. And no, it doesn't. His publications on these subjects presented very positive results from his experimental work. But this only added to the hysterical outrage of his critics. They slandered his early research on human sexuality, called the Orgone Accumulator a sex box, 
and subjected Dr. Reich and his associates to character assassination and slander. So now we have talked about the big whoop, usually the organ energy. But let's talk about the thing that one can actually see Reich has um, inspired, and that is socialism, feminism, and sexual revolution. Now, these topics are spicy topics, uh, because people claim that William Reich kind of pushed the sexual revolution quite a lot with his ideas, and tried to, well, L look at this. I, I, I don't know what to say. Just look at this. After years of trying in vain to debate the existence of God and getting nowhere in persuading people to become atheistic communists, Reich noticed a simple fact. If you change the sexual behavior of idealistic young Catholics in the direction of sexual liberation, especially masturbation, then the idea of God simply evaporated from their minds and they defected from the Catholic Church and the way to successful revolution was clear. So this is Dr. E. Michael Jones talking about his book, uh, Libido Dominanti, which is a book about like sex, sexual revolution in the, in the Christian church and how people use sex to control, which is honestly, no, I don't think it's even worth reading it, but. It's interesting regardless. And a lot of what Dr. Jones here does is taken in Reich's ideas, and here's one in where jerking off removes God from the equation, which it obviously doesn't, but regardless, it's a, it's a bit nuts. But he goes into, in the lecture or in the book, he goes into what William Reich have said personally in his uh, therapy sessions we had with uh, women and men where Christianity kind of pushes this idea of sin into you the, the, the idea that you feel guilty for the actions you have done because you're sinful for example jerking off and what Dr. Jones here claims that William says is that uh, there was a woman coming into a session she felt guilty for flicking a bean uh, Dr. Reich said to continue flicking the bean, and after a while, the idea of dread removes from the body. And this then should push the sexual revolution further, bringing in the, the era of atheistic communists, because you're flicking the bean. N no. Freud and William Reich are not big figures within the sexual movement. Had they pushed in the, uh, like, uh, back in the day? Yeah, of course he did. Well, well, I don't know how much William Reich had, but Freud obviously had some some pushing in it. But are they relevant today? No. No, God, no. Majority of the theories that the sexual revolution now goes after are not after either Freud or William Reich. They are other people. But again, these are easy targets, so that's why you pick them. So I made this little short video. Thank you for listening. Um, just want to say... Pardon me for not making the videos of the left-wingers yet. Uh, they will be coming, hopefully, in the future. But I kind of wanted to finish this series off talking about these uh, weird people before I move into other topics, otherwise it feels weird. Uh, but I wanted to make a video on Reich for a little while, talking about just the, 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 the minor details of him. Yes, so when I talk to him in the future, there is a reference video on that I made myself that kind of fits in the blanks, so I don't have to repeat myself in those videos. Uh, more than that, uh, more videos should be coming out. Thank you for the support so far. I've actually been feeling quite warm uh, for the support I've been getting. But I will also make more proprietary videos in the future, but one thing at a time, I'm going to finish this series off. Thank you, everybody.